In today's video, I'm going to use this tiny little paper clip to help explain stress fractures in the back and part of why they can be so challenging to pick up on exam. What's going on everybody? I'm Brian and I'm a doctor who's also an avid sports fan and it's my goal in these videos to help break down common sports injuries and explain them in ways that are easier to understand and hopefully learn something from. Today's video is all about stress fractures, particularly in the back, and this was inspired by the news recently about Carson Wentz suffering a stress fracture in his spine. We know from the stories in the news that there was a lot of controversy around whether or not the doctors had missed the diagnosis or why it hadn't shown up on previous scans, but then finally did when he was playing and all this stuff. So this might allude a little bit to why in general stress fractures can be a real challenge for doctors. So to start off with, I just have this regular paper clip here in my hand. If you look at this as a metal paper clip, looks like a regular paper clip. So consider that this is kind of an analogy for the spine. Over the years as players stress their bodies and during the season, essentially you can think of bending this paper clip back and forth as some sort of stress on the spine. Now obviously it's a little bit deformed, but just with bending it once, you can see it still looks like a paper clip. To the naked eye, you can't tell that there's been any damage, but we know from bending it back and forth that there's been some degree of change in the paper clip, in the metal itself. Now ultimately what can happen if we keep stressing that back and forth, back and forth through games, through practices, through weightlifting, through all of these things, ultimately over time, it fractures. And so this is an analogy we use with patients who have developed stress fractures. We know that as the bones are moving and changing position, they're subjected to different stress and load that just like this paper clip can be really hard to pick up initially on things like imaging scans or clinically because we can't really always see the super fine details. This isn't a perfect analogy because we know in the case of Carson Wentz, they're saying he doesn't need surgery, which is a really good thing. And so hopefully over time by resting it and trying to prevent that repetitive load, that fracture can heal itself and the spine can get back to healthy shape. Oftentimes with stress fractures, when you're trying to diagnose them with imaging, it can be hard to pick up the little subtle changes that you see in the bone as a result of that repetitive stress. Eventually they will become visible on scans, but sometimes it's not until the point where they've actually fractured and there's a break in the bone. Now hopefully the fracture can heal up really well and he'll get back to being full strength next season if he has to sit out this full year. But I hope that was a useful analogy to give you. And it, like I said, it's something we use for our patients in clinic when we're trying to explain stress fractures. This idea of just repeatedly bending or stressing something, it'll do fine, it'll look pretty normal, but ultimately it'll get to the point where it actually does break. We'll talk some more about the specifics of the injury if we get any more information, but for now, like I said, there's just too many details that are unknown, and so this is all we'll focus on for now. I hope that was helpful. I hope it was interesting. Next time you've got a paperclip laying around and you want to help explain to someone how a stress fracture develops, use that simple paperclip analogy. Thanks, as always, for watching this video, everybody, and we'll see you next time.